We have breaking news here on Dallas Mavericks today. Harrison Graham and Jeff Cooperstein. Chris Haynes reports that Matisse Thibel, the Portland Trailblazers restricted free agent, plans to sign an offer sheet with the Dallas Mavericks. Coop, we have a lot to dive into, a lot of reaction uh, to discuss, and the timeline of how this actually all works together. We'll get to all that here, but... Subscribe to the channel, Coop, that we're almost at 24,000 subs. Do it for Kobe. He was almost a Mav, according to Mark Cuban, so we'll count him as an honorary Mav this one time. We need 420 subs. That's a great number, by the way. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We keep you up to date with all things Mavs news and rumors, including this breaking news right here. Yeah, when the Mavs make a move, we make a move. And uh, listen, signings, rumors, trades, we got it all covered. Let's get to 24,000 subs ASAP. Can we get there by the end of the week? That would be dope. All right, Coop, let's talk about the news here. Thibel to Dallas, could it be happening? The report from Haynes is that they are going to sign him to an offer sheet. Now, let's just first talk about the timetable of this. He cannot actually physically sign this offer sheet until 12 Eastern tomorrow, Thursday, July 6th, because that's when the moratorium period ends. So none of the restricted guys, that's why there hadn't been movement there, can sign offer sheets until then. I think you'll start seeing leaks like this one today of, potential offer sheet so once he does sign that hopefully it's right at noon eastern tomorrow that would give the portland trailblazers up to 24 hours to match uh a uh, offer sheet there yeah and it'll be interesting to see what portland decides to do i think it all depends on the years that that the mavs give thibel i i projected it be somewhere between i think it'll be a three or four year deal i imagine like it'll be four years 32 million maybe even a little bit more than that I know the Mavs are really looking for a wing defender, and Thibel is one of the best wing defenders, if not the best wing defender in the NBA. So I think this is a good move for the Mavericks, and it's the first major domino to fall here in free agency. Yeah, and look, uh, in terms of contract, what can the Mavs offer? Well, they still have the full $12.4 million uh, mid-level exception. So if they wanted to absolutely max out Thibel in terms of what they could offer, they could basically give him the DiVincenzo deal. Uh, that the that the Knicks uh, gave him, which is around four years and fifty million. That's about what they can max out on Thibel. I don't think it will be that much based on Thibel's inconsistent play offensively, especially early on in his career. I know that's kind of what pushed him out of Philadelphia. Is they just got frustrated with his inability to improve as a three point shooter. But Coop, the irony is. As soon as he left Philadelphia and goes to Portland, granted, small sample size, he had a heavier role, more than doubled his minutes. He was shooting four three-pointers per game and was shooting almost 39% from three. I don't expect those numbers, but if he shoots three to four three-pointers per game and is knocking down 35% even with his defensive ability, I would absolutely be thrilled with that level of production and just that type of an addition to this basketball team. Yeah, I've said this repeatedly over the last season. If Matisse Thibel was a league average three-point shooter, he would be a starter on 30 NBA teams because he's so good on defense. I think he's two-time all-NBA first-team defense, so he's one of the the very best defenders in the league. If he could learn to be just an average shooter, I mean, I think he would be a $15 million a year player, let alone signing for less than the mid-level. Yeah, and look, in terms of fit, it makes sense, right? Because you need perimeter defenders next to Kyrie Irving, next to Luka Doncic. Stiebel is easily the best one available uh, on the open market. He can guard one through fours um, with his length, with, with his strength, with his lateral movement ability. You look at uh, the Mavs' current roster, I mean, if you kind of want to just mentally add Matisse Thibel here. Luca Kyrie is your backcourt. Maybe some combination of Josh Green and Thibel as your three and four, obviously kind of positionless there. Then Holmes at the five. I still think the door could be open for a potential trade for a center. You would still have Tim Hardaway's contract. Obviously, if Tim's here, he's an option to start. Reggie Bullock's another option to start on the wing as well. I think between Green, Bullock, and Thibel, uh, in the scenario that Tim does get traded, Two of those three would start, and the other one would come off the bench uh, with uh, Jaden Hardy, and that would kind of be your bench backcourt. Yeah, I have. I I would have to imagine that it would be Bullock coming off the bench. I think you'd want to start Josh Green and Matisse Thybul next to each other, and then have Bullock as that wing defender slash three point shooter coming off the bench as well. I think that would suits him more. 
that suits him more in his role with the Mavs, and I think it would suit Thibel to be a starting on the first unit with Luka and Kyrie. And look, Thibel played his best of his career as a starter, playing 28 minutes per game for Portland uh, late last season. He kind of took advantage of the Blazers having some injuries and uh, playing well. That does make you wonder, though, with him playing well in Portland, Coop, and they are hitting the reset button. Like, are they willing to match a contract offer? And that's where things get interesting. We'll explore more of that uh, in a second, but I want to ask you guys first. How much would you give Matisse Thibel per year? Coop says four for $32 million. I think you can go one or two ways. You could either give him four years and go a tick less on the per, $8 million, or you could say two for 20 two for 22 maybe pay a little bit more annually, uh, but uh, you're, uh, you're only giving him a two-year commitment, kind of keep him on the Seth Curry timeline as well. Curry gives you the offense, Thibel gives you the defense. Let us know how much would you give Matisse Thibel uh, per year. And before we look at some other free agents, Coop, I do want to kind of explore that part of it just a little bit more because in your scenario, let's say he does sign four for 32, the Blazers don't match, uh, and they keep him around. Well, you could then theoretically, if you're Dallas, you could move Seth Curry from the biannual based on how much that contract is worth into the mid-level and between him and Thibel, that fills that up. That saves your biannual contract for next year biannual you obviously get it every other year uh so that is an option i know tim cato had reported that moving seth into part of the mid-level uh bucket could be a possibility so that would be intriguing for dallas to give them some flexibility next offseason as well yeah that's kind of why i think it'll be right around that eight million dollar year range because seth curry is at four and a half million a season so that would just make the math work there with the mid-level exception and if you save that biannual, that's obviously huge because it gives you another asset in next year's free agency as well to add to the team. So I think I think that kind of money makes sense. Now, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the Mavericks went above that $8 million a year threshold, but I think that's kind of where we're looking at here. And look, let's be honest. You want to for sure get them, you got to pay them more. Got to pay Because Portland, uh, Portland can match uh, any offer uh, that you get. They gave Jeremy Grant $32 million a year, so they could they could, they might pay Thibel $20 million a year for all we know. Yeah, who knows? You look at some of the notable... Uh, free agents here. Like we said, that restricted free agent market could start to heat up. Grant Williams, P.J. Washington. Now, Mark Stein just had a report that Washington is seeking $18 million per year. Which so. is crazy because it sounds like, I, I believe he also said the max that he could get from another team was four years somewhere in the range of $54 million. So he can't get that from any other team besides Charlotte. And what, what it sounds like is if, if he doesn't get the deal he wants from the Hornets, that he's just going to sign the qualifying offer and be an unrestricted free agent next offseason. Which would be interesting because then they would have Miles Bridges and P.J. Washington. For the Mavs, the most they could offer, again, is the full mid-level. And the fact that they're going to sign Thibel to an offer sheet, I think that pretty much eliminates Washington from any possible consideration here. Grant Williams, I think he's probably seeking more than that 12.42. So, I, you know, with him in Washington, if you're going to try and acquire them, Probably has to be a sign-and-trade scenario, and I don't know if I like those two players well enough to ship out Tim and pay one of them a similar type of contract. Like, I'd rather yeah. just bring in Thibault uh, and then hold, you know, try and make a move for a center with the trade assets that you have. I think that and is the, probably a better usage of your money. Kelly Oubre obviously still out there. I don't think the Mavs are bringing back Christian Wood, but a couple of names just to throw in there. As well. And the interesting thing with Grant Williams as well is reports are the Celtics want a first round pick in a sign and trade for him, and they're just not going to get that. No. So they can they can want it all they want, but you're not getting a first for a guy who's a restricted free agent. Yeah. So again, I kind of like the Thibault. Move, hypothetically move Seth into the mid-level, kind of combine those two for the 12.4. Uh, and then uh, you save the biannual for next year. Who knows? Maybe there's someone else in free agency that they like that uh, you yeah, know, they, 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 they could use it on. Yeah, they could use it on. You know, maybe there's a vet men guy that's drawing a lot of interest. You pay him a little bit more to get him under that bucket uh, to get him from going to another team. It just gives you more flexibility if it falls under that umbrella. So what should the Mavs' next move be? Obviously... I think the next next move is getting this officially signed and waiting and seeing what Portland does. I don't think there would be much action in that 24-hour time period. Uh, and then I think, again, Coop, if you get him uh, signed, then I think you it's kind of vet men and trade exploration. I yeah, think I think the next, working with. the next move after Thibel is looking at the center market and seeing what trades they can possibly execute. Now, I will say this, the Mavericks and Kings trade becomes finalized tomorrow as well. So that means they can officially move – uh, homes in a trade, and that also means Prosper and Lively can practice with the Summer League team. Yeah, so there you go. So let us know what you guys think the Mavs' next move should be. 
We'll be back with another video once Thibel officially signs. I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, that will be, again, tomorrow at uh, 12 Eastern, 11 Central, unless they dilly-dally for whatever reason. So uh, stick with us. Subscribe to the channel. Quick shout-outs before we get out of here. Coop, shout-out to all the people who shared. Was it yesterday's video? Yesterday's video, yep. Shout-out to KB Talk Sports. I'm going to butcher this name, but Allo Tarash. And Michael Nizza, shout out to you guys for sharing yesterday's video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Jeff underscore Coop 27. Follow Harrison on Twitter at HGramNFL. We're always chopping it up, talking Mavs and other NBA stuff as well. So be sure to give us a follow. Yeah, and hey, share today's video as well. Uh, we'll give you guys uh, retweets to everybody who does. All right, Coop, we're out of here. If anything else breaks today, we'll be back with another video. Till then, Matisse Thibel Watch coming up tomorrow. We'll see you guys.